Hello, my name is Justin Bright, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program version 1.3, in which I am attempting to make Kerbals a multiplanetary species. It's been about a week. I took the last week off um, just to, you know, relax, play some other games, that sort of thing. Uh, while things are heating up here in our um, expedition, uh, what we are doing now is we are bringing back the Duna Express tug. It just came back into orbit around Kerbin with a load of... Um, carborundum that it scooped from the band of carborundum that exists around the sun so they uh, went out scooped up all that uh, well they I say it's an automated vehicle um, but I brought that back and I filled up these external tanks and I believe I have set these up such that they will be able to uh, um, they will be able to bring back down to the ground a each one will bring back down a load of carborundum, which um, should be roughly 70, 80 million funds a piece, I think. So these are incredibly valuable things that I'm not being incredibly careful with. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about using... Uh, I don't have a heat shield. Like, my thought process when I designed this was that I would... Um, first, let's get the heck out of the way. Uh, but my thought process was that I would design them such that they can just drop right back in because they aren't going to need to... Uh, they're going to be coming from a very low orbit because uh, the Duna Express Tug has functionally infinite delta V for orbital maneuvers around Kerbin, that's for sure. Um, so now we're coming into the atmosphere, and um, I thought that even... Because the orbital velocity over Kerbin is so relatively low in the grand scheme of things that this wouldn't be any kind of an issue. Uh, so it has a Rhino engine on the back there with about 600 meters per second of delta V, give or take. Um, and that's it. Like it has some uh, SAS um, rings around it that will help it to maintain stability. But other than that, that's really the only thing keeping this... Uh, from flipping out and burning up in the atmosphere. All right, so we are at about 55 kilometers, and let's see how we're doing. And oh, we are undershooting quite a bit, actually. So let's uh, let me see. What if I just? Ooh, we're starting to get toasty. Um, but yeah, let's push ourselves straight up a little bit, reduce our uh, vertical velocity, uh, reduce that. Um, descent speed a little bit so that we can hopefully get a little bit closer. Uh, this is costing me more delta V than I would have liked. Um, yeah, Trajectories is a really cool mod that really gives you a lot of great feedback, but it's very particular. Um, right down to the orient orientation of your vessel um, at the time. It assumes that it's going to stay in that exact orientation all the way down to the ground. So, uh, it's, I mean, that's something that it has to do to be able to make predictions at all, right? But that can, uh, if you've got your v vessel in a weird position, that can make things um, not work out the way that you would have imagined. But uh, in any case, we are on our way down to the ground. And um, yeah, we're 43 kilometers. We are getting pretty toasty. We're really getting into the... Um, hot plasma airstream now. If you take a look up at the top left part of the screen, you can see my signal is degrading rapidly. Um, once we lose signal, then we are just going to have to see how well I did as far as designing this thing to be aerodynamically stable when it is full of carborundum. Um, and it looks like we're doing okay. We are tilting a little bit, but we're not flipping completely out, so that's a, that's a good sign. Um, unfortunately, it's actually warming up these this container here, which is not particularly heat resistant. Uh, the only thing that I think has any significant amount of heat resistance is going to be the engine bell itself. Nope, there we go. We have control again, so I can stick myself uh, pointing directly retrograde to the surface. Oh, oh, oh shoot. Oh, fire the engine. Uh, I think the uh, solar panel just cooked off is what just happened there. Uh, and the heat on our engine bell is actually getting pretty dang high, so I am firing the engine to try to get us rapidly down past this speed that is dangerous. All right, looks like I, I saw the speed, I saw the heat tick downwards a little bit, so I think we're gonna be okay 
Ooh, maybe not. I lied. Okay. Yeah, we just need to get this down just enough so that it's not um, going to break that engine bell. Because if that engine bell goes, I'm pretty sure the entire rest of the vessel is going to melt underneath it. There we go. Now we're seeing the heat decreasing as our speed decreases in the lower parts of the atmosphere. Unfortunately, I burned off two-thirds of, our, of uh, the Delta V that this vessel had, and we're still going to go screaming over the top of Kerbal Space Center, it looks like. Um, shoot, we are getting really low, and we are not shedding velocity at any kind of decent pace here. Let's fire the engine, use up the last of this Delta V, uh, which will both decrease our mass and hopefully also propel us a little bit enough so that we can get these parachutes open. I have drogues, but it's not going to make a difference if I just can't get them open, if I can't get slow enough. Even drogues need a certain amount of uh, low velocity. And what the heck? See th Did you see that? Oh no! <laughs> well, okay. So, that was weird, but... I should have expected this result. <laughs> ah, 80 million fund. Oopsie. All right. So instead of trying to save scum our way to victory and be goofy that way, uh, I think it's important to kind of analyze what went wrong there. And the issues that we faced was both heat and shedding velocity at the end because the vessel that we are trying to bring in is incredibly aerodynamic. Um, so, the, the, and the only thing that we could do differently is the trajectory that we take into the atmosphere, as well as when we burn our 600 meters per second of delta V that we had in that tank. Um, and the way that I see it, those variables would just be like, well, how aggressively do we re-enter? How much do we skim? Um, we were already in an incredibly low orbit, so it's not like we could have like done a whole bunch of uh, low passes through the atmosphere to slow down. Um, it was just a matter of, do we save ourselves from burning up, or do I try to save that fuel for um, the actual landing, getting down, uh, getting our velocity down low enough so that we can actually open up our drogue chutes, which would slow us down the rest of the way. So rather than spending an hour trying to fight that um i think what we'll do instead is we are sending up now the heat shield attacher with uh jeb and bill who have um a couple of heat shields kind of stacked uh in the stack i suppose uh of this vessel which is heading up to rendezvous with the duna express tug and then we can actually attach some inflatable heat shields which should help uh, hopefully help us to solve this problem without, you know, save scumming and being goofy and, uh, you know, quick saving, quick loading over and over again until we get the ideal result. We're just going to have to eat that $80 million lost and, uh, yeah, move on from there. All right, so we are approaching in a pretty cool shot as we uh, back slowly into... Uh, the near encounter with the Dune Express tug. So this is a pretty simple vessel. We just have some uh, thud engines attached radially to some radially attached tanks. Um, and then we have a couple of these. Uh, we have some separators and some uh, the five meter expandable heat shield attached to the bottom. And now uh, we're going to test this out by detaching one of these um, carborundum drop tanks and then we are just going to back slowly in to uh, rendezvous with it and then we can actually do the attaching uh, since we brought Jeb and Bill and Bill is an engineer and Bill has what the heck was that oh wow it bumped something I don't know what happened there but it went flying off at a relatively high velocity i mean when four meters is high velocity but anyways we have got that all settled and now we are coming in um one thing i do know is that the inflatable heat shield is about 1.5 tons so we are going to need both jeb and bill to team lift this thing off of the ship 
uh, to actually make that attachment. So it's going to take two Kerbals working in tandem uh, to hold this thing down, hold this thing in place, and then get them get it bolted to the top of the um, to the top of the drop tanks. Uh, the way that I've decided to do this is we have a pretty open space on the top, and the vessel is actually fairly neutral as far as um, which direction it wants to face. Uh, it's aerodynamically stable in either direction. I did some playing around with this in the vehicle assembly building to try to, with a RCS build aid, which has been updated for 1.3. Um, or that may be one of the few that has not been updated for 1.3, but I'm using it anyways, which is terrible of me. But anyways, um, I've played with that and it looks like this should work as far as uh, stability because we are going to be coming through the hot part of the atmosphere with the uh, fuel tank on the front there completely full, um, or at least mostly full, which means that the center of mass is going to be up a little bit, which should be helpful as far as uh, keeping this aerodynamically stable with the heat shield facing down. So. That is the general idea of how we're going to uh, make this work. So now let's just get our Kerbals back inside the capsule so that they can hang out while we give this a shot. And once again, this is something that we are just going to give one try to. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a whole bunch of safe scumming to try and see if I can... Um, get the best possible outcome. That's why we're only doing this. I have enough for all three of them, but I'm just going to try this on the one and then we're going to see if this works. And then if it does, we'll move on from there. Um, but I feel like this is like high risk, high reward kind of thing. And I need to be taking this a little bit more because I have the ability to get torch drives and carborundum and warp drives and stuff. Then I need to, you know, be taking bigger risks and allowing those risks to actually have impact. So let's get this uh, headed down towards the ground. Where are you? Kerbal Space Center, there I see you now. So let's go ahead and put down our maneuver so that we can use the trajectories mod to get an idea of where we are going to be coming down. So we've got that. That's a little bit further out, but I'm sure that the... Um, expansion of this heat shield is going to be very very draggy uh to the prediction model so no need to worry too much about that and whoops so oh shoot there it goes there goes my maneuver note again um but yeah so let's go ahead burn a little bit 30 meters per second brings me down enough um which is why i don't think multiple passes is going to be possible i think as soon as we dip down into the atmosphere that's going to be all there is to it all right so let's get this up face ourselves prograde and then that looks pretty good as far as our, um, that looks pretty good as far as our uh, rotation. So let's go ahead and get back around now that we've warped around the planet and we point ourselves prograde. Uh, I haven't quite thought through how we're going to flip this thing around when we get down, but uh, for now we are just going to be kind of shoulder charging our way through the hot, thick part of the atmosphere. And, um, yeah. Hopefully we will be able to turn this thing around, or at, at the very least, we should be able to open up the drogue chutes because the uh, heat shield itself is pretty darn draggy. All right, we are getting pretty toasty now. We are down to about 40 kilometers, and we seem to be going pretty well. Um, the we, You'll notice that we have just lost signal once again, and we are holding fairly steady. We are pointing pretty much directly at the horizon at the moment. But as we keep going, you'll notice that we are slowly rotating off axis. So the bottom, is, the carborundum heavy portion is swinging downwards just a little bit while the top um, part is swinging upwards, which um, is not super ideal, but it looks, I mean, we don't have any SAS right now, so we, there's, I mean, we're just subject to aerodynamic forces and that's all, that's all that is uh, pushing on us. So it looks like we are still pretty well occluded by that nice wide uh, inflated heat shield, which is just fantastic. I absolutely love that part. It's one of my favorite new parts um, that's been added. Like it's, I like it better than some modded parts like 
I, I use mods to add things to the game, and this one was added to stock, and it's just glorious. Uh, it's so useful for exactly this sort of circumstance. Um, but yeah, it looks like the our carborundum tank is turning a little bit orange. I don't know, maybe I'm just staring at it for so long and all the fire around it, but yeah, it looks like we've got a little bit of our, the bottom of our ship is coming out of occlusion just a little bit uh, and is catching that plasma stream. Um, but we are still mostly pointing directly into uh, our velocity vector. We are just about, like, what is that, 20 degrees off of our velocity vector or so, give or take, um, which is still pretty safe. Like, the worst case scenario, obviously, is if this thing flips completely around and uh, becomes like an umbrella, but um, it looks like we are holding steady so far and we are getting pretty rapidly down to the point where we will be safe as far as... Uh, uh, our speed is concerned, so we are getting out of the uh, re-entry plasma portion. And you can see we are coming down in a pretty good spot, actually. It looks like we are right on target for getting to the Kerbal Space Center. Uh, if anything, we may wind up landing in front of it, like in the grasslands ahead of it. Alright, so we have signal once again, and we are... Um, coming out of the plasma we have control um, I'm trying to burn the engine just a little bit just to get the gimbal to try to flip me around because I am not flipping around no way no how um, I think if I decouple this heat shield it's going to explode but oh there we go we all right so the drogue shoots have let's not talk about how they went straight through the heat shield that um, that's by design. Yeah, yeah, we'll say that it's by, by design. Um, but yeah, if I pick up that heat shield, it's probably going to explode and destroy everything. And oh my god, it's doing it again. What the heck? Why is there chunks of land? Oh my god, that's really trippy. <laughs> uh, so because I'm recording this afterwards, I can tell you that I found that that is in fact uh, because I'm using an old version of Scatterer. Uh, I had to turn off one of the renderers, uh, the ocean shader, I think, uh, because that's being caused by that because the scatter is not updated for 1.3. So I have made the big journey to 1.3. I finally updated because I wanted to be current on the MKS uh, updates that RoverDude was putting out. Um, but that means that there was a couple, just a few things that were not yet updated that would cause me trouble. And Scatterer is one of them, so I'm using them at my own risk. Please do not raise any support uh, tickets if you try to use them yourself and notice any issues. Uh, they're working on it. It's up to them. Um, okay, but it looks like our parachutes have all opened, and um, spamming parachutes ridiculously seems to work once again. And yeah, I actually didn't burn my engine very much, so I still have a good 400 meters per second of delta V on this thing, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, now we lazily drift down to the surface, I guess. All right, a couple, uh, about 100 meters further down, and let's actually light up this engine a little bit and try to slow this down, because I just realized we are on a 10 degree slope, and oh no, 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 no. Oh, okay, it just popped the engine off. All right, we're okay. All right, please hold steady, please stop rolling. We've got carborundum here. Can I recover, please? Oh, what's happening? Oh, there we go, woo! We recovered! Alright, and well, unfortunately the VAB and the entire KSC has been drowned. But we have earned 77.5 million funds, mostly from Carborundum. Uh, and we did it! <laughs> We're never going to have to worry about money again. Um, but we may end up having to spend a whole bunch of that money, you know, finding, like, sending a mission to Atlantis, which is the Kerbal Space Center, I guess. All right, so there's only one major thing to do with all that money, and that is buy the two and a half meter Alcubierre drive, which is going to cost us 25 million of that 77 that we just earned. Ta-da! We have completed the tech tree 100%. Fantastic! Now let's go get the other two. All right, so we are back at the Duna Express tug. 
And what I think we are going to do this time is we are decoupling these and I think we're just going to decouple and then decouple the other one because I don't know that I want to actually go through that, um, you know, I don't want to actually manually pilot each one of these down. I think that I've proved that it can be done so I can let stage recovery do the rest of the work. So now we are just going to be turning the Duna Express tug, which whips around now that it doesn't have that heavy load on it. And we can push this up into a higher orbit where it's going to hang out and pretend to be a space station for a little while. In the meantime, we are deploying our two uh, probes. We are deploying their solar wings um, so that they can gain a little bit of power while we wait for the um, heat shield attachers, which there it is. Um, we are bringing them up to attach heat shields to each one of these. Uh, now... I do believe that we should be able to make this work fairly easily now that we know how to do it. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be sending them out once again to remove these heat shields from the back of this. Then we're going to attach them to this, um, to the uh, probes. And then we can actually just pop these little se uh, stack separators because... Uh, actually trying to remove jettison the heat shields will explode the vessel violently um probably because it pushes the uh heat shield through the vessel i've never had a good experience trying to decouple a heat shield after it's being used um i'm sure there's a way to do it or a method or whatever but with these heat inflatable ones it's never caused me anything but trouble uh, so yeah, now we you'll notice I have our first um, drop pod out ahead and it is on its way back down to the surface. And we are basically just going to be um, putting these into an orbit that not trajectories, but stage recovery will read as re-entering close to Kerbal Space Center. Uh, so we want it to disappear pretty much right above uh, Kerbal Space Center. So in the way that vessels normally disappear when they are uh, being determined as within atmosphere, because that's how stage recovery works. And while we do that, uh, we just make sure that everybody is okay and we are all ready to go. And uh, you're not going to let me switch, are you? You're not going to let me switch to the heat shield? Okay. All right. So now we are attached to this. So we are just going to ride it out a little bit. Uh, and we can bring down our Kerbals that we sent up on this mission to do uh, the, make those additions. And we will wait to do that for the next orbit. And then, before then, you see we just had those two disappear inside the atmosphere. And there we go. So, it looks like we earned a little bit less money than we would have. Um, about 68 million instead of the full value of 80. Uh, we got 86%. And this one we actually did a little bit worse with 80%. So, I feel like that's a good tax for not doing that manually and getting it down a little bit closer because I don't really feel like doing the same thing over and over again. Um, I've demonstrated that that's a thing that we can do and we have a good uh, method for doing it. So we will just leave it at that. And this one should be a fairly easy one as well. Um, we are just bringing home a capsule, that's all. Uh, nothing special, we don't actually need that transfer stage. It's just thuds and monopropellant and fuel and all that, so. Now we are just bringing these Kerbals home after their successful mission to make those repairs. And we have made all of the money ever, basically, in doing this. And they are landing now in the desert just to the west of the Kerbal Space Center, or on the previous continent, I suppose. So not quite just to the west. But yes, and now we land. Whoa! Okay, we're fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> But yes, there we are. We have done it. We have 200 million funds. And I think that is actually all the time I'm going to have for this episode today. Uh, I will be back again this week with more episodes. If you enjoyed this one, please share and subscribe, and I will see you next time.